Devin Pike with the Dallas International Film Festival. You don't get a chance to do many takeovers in a documentary. As the um, cast and crew of Tomato Republic will tell you, it's, it's life as it goes. And with Tomato Republic, you've got small town politics as the crux of the documentary, which always is rife with so many different storylines. Mr. Gowen was one of the three mayoral candidates in the town's election that is documented in Tomato Republic. Andrew and Whitney are the directors, and Mr. Gowen's nephew is here as well. And I have a specific reason that I'm incredibly glad that you made the trip out to Dallas. And I'm glad to see all four of you here. Thanks for bringing this film to the festival. Thank Welcome. you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Mr. Gowen, when you were approached to be the subject of one of the as one of the candidates of the documentary. What was your reaction? Because you had a, a, a phenomenal slate of issues that needed to be addressed in the town. You knew what needed to be fixed, and you had a specific reason why you wanted to run for mayor. You wanted to make your community better. You had a focus on that when you also have a, a, a deeply seated incumbent and a young up-and-comer in uh, as a third candidate. Did you want a documentary crew running around with you following your moves? I don't know if we, any of us ever planned on, I, mean, I think what, we were gonna shoot for a weekend. And um, see you know, what just, just, let's do a little weekend shoot and see what happened. Jenna had been on me for the past few years. You know, you're interesting. Let's figure out something. Let's, you know, there's a story there. And when I, whatever that fateful Monday or Tuesday was that I said, you know, I'm gonna run for mayor because I assure you I did not think it out very well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just one of those things we'd sat around and talked about all the issues and everything that we've had in town for so long as a group of friends and, you know, my, my group of friends anyway. And I knew there were some feelings that wanted to change things. And I called her and I said, here's your moment. Let's, um, let's look at it and see what happens. And um, I think the weekend turned into months. Three months. Three months of <laughs> We of never this. left him alone. <laughs> and I um, I don't know, I think, I think one, probably one of the, the worst parts of it is I'm uh, a little colorful with language at times and <laughs> having to remember that um, I'm mocked and um, you know, walking through my building. What's, you know, we gotta, we've got work to do here too at the point in time we're doing that. And friends would be like, why are you whispering to me? And I said, because there's a microphone. Right there. <laughs> it's like Wolf of Wall Street. You slide, you slide well, the note I mean, over. Yeah, I, I can't exactly, so. <laughs> but no, I mean, we had a great, great time. So from, from a director's standpoint, you, you also had the, the view of we're just going to shoot for a weekend, maybe we'll get a nice short out of the process. Talk a little bit about your thought process on expanding it to a feature-length documentary. Well, I guess it, it just kept expanding itself. And as the story progressed, as access progressed, and we, we had more and more stuff to work with, our editor, um, in the beginning, we're shooting for, what, 12 minutes, 15 minutes? Right. And then now he said, there's no way. And then it, that turned into 30 minutes. And we said, OK, let's try to get it into like a 42 to 48 minute, an hour long piece that we could use for TV. And that didn't work either. So I think it just kept adding it to itself, the story did. and. Um, we, we got more access, more characters, and the story progressed. It, a runoff ensued, and all kinds of things that we didn't plan for that wouldn't exactly. fit into a 15-minute piece. So. <laughs> yeah. when, you're, when you're an independent film, you, you have a finite amount of budget. You're, everything's coming out of your pocket. As the scope increased for the film, were you looking at it saying, well, do I have to sell an organ? How are we going to get this thing yes. across the finish line? <laughs> Um, you know, you do have to think about that. We have a production company that's um, in Houston and Austin, and basically what we did was slept less and did more commercial projects to pay for this project that we were passionate about because we couldn't walk away at that point. You know, it was too interesting, and we kept meeting more fascinating characters. I mean, that the whole film, Rob would say, you should go talk to my Betty the County Judge, yeah. and I laughed the whole interview. <laughs> like, you hear me snorting, laughing in the background, you know, and I've been doing this for a while, so we couldn't, we couldn't stop at that point. We just had to figure out how to do it. And truthfully, our crew, I mean, everybody worked a lot for free. They mm -hmm. just did it. They were passionate about it. All the cameramen, they were asking to go back. So there were a lot of great. guys in one hotel room. And yeah. Then, and then we finally started tapping up friends and family around there, right. like, hey, could we come stay with you guys for a weekend? Because and hotels, I provided beer, so right. Thankfully, <laughs> we could eat at Sadler's yeah. for free. The, the fuel for any good shoot: free food and, and booze. And booze. <laughs> now. One of the great characters, and I say character because you're you're watching the film and you, you, 
we're almost used to the fake documentary where it, where it shows off all these people in the town. It, it's almost like you wanted this to be a sitcom, even though it, 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 it's not. And one of the amazing characters is uh, your cousin, who might very well be your greatest political supporter. <laughs> I, was, I, I knew early on that he had more contacts in his phone than I did. <laughs> <laughs> So I promptly named him my um, campaign campaign manager. Best ever. Best ever, and um, there's not a day that that in that entire election cycle that he wasn't texting and calling, "Go vote for Rob! Go vote for Rob! Go vote for Rob!" <laughs> and um, so I mean, he's he's been a, I mean, probably my key supporter there in the entire race. Well, I'll ask you the same question as his campaign manager: Were you concerned? with the distraction of cameras running around <laughs> your cousin's campaign and what effect it might have, either positively or negatively. Yes, I do. And I um, say, um, Bob is, is the great person, and I want to know we, he, he is laughing, and he's always there for us, and, and he will be a, a mayor, and, and I love him, and, I want him to do it again. And so. Kirk, are you camera shy at all? No, no. no. Kirk is exactly. our biggest supporter. <laughs> yeah. Kirk, Kirk's not camera shy at all either. And Kirk's so. already planning his next run, apparently. Yeah. When, when Rob didn't want the cameras around, we'd go get Kirk. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Can we follow you? You can yeah. talk to Rob. Exactly. Got to get some shot today. Exactly. We've got the people yeah. here. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I want this, this, uh, this movie, with this and no, I want this, this to, to win this. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you've got an you've got an hour long plus campaign ad for Rob. It you're yeah. ready for the next Stop. time. I do. Is this something that he has discussed with you? Are you interested in doing another run at the mayor's show? I say this. I um, <laughs> saved my campaign signs, and we will either run a legitimate campaign, or I can be the kinky Friedman of every election for the rest of my <laughs> life in that town. <laughs> So You're, if you tell me that Kinky is not really running for ag commissioner, then I'm going to be <laughs> mad. I'm going to be uh, mad. So, all right, I won't peg you down to it yet. Fine, Squirrely, such a politician. Exactly, <laughs> Kirk. Um, one of the highlights of the film is at, at the restaurant where you work. Regardless of who it is, if somebody tells you it's their birthday you will sing happy birthday yes. to them. Oh, please don't have a birthday in this room. <laughs> oh, our producer, Andrew, oh, is getting yeah. ready to celebrate Andrew a birthday. Andrew has a birthday. Um, yeah. Could I please trouble you to sing happy birthday to him? It would, it would mean a lot to me. I will. I'll do it. Andrew? <coughs> <coughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Andrew. Happy birthday to you. All right. And this is why that was the mi- that talent. was the mild version. <laughs> Now I don't have to get you a gift, Andrew. There we go. <laughs> Happy birthday, I have ulterior Andrew. motives, Kirk. Thank you for that. Um, again, an amazingly entertaining film. Please tell me you've got plans for it outside the festival circuit. We're certainly hoping we do. We, um, we feel really blessed and lucky to have gotten into Dallas International Film Festival, and this has been... They've treated us like rock stars. It's been such an amazing first film experience. Our background is in news, so we're not used to all the fun stuff. So um, we certainly hope to you know, go on from here. We'd love other people around the country to see Tomato Republic. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. One of the reasons that Dallas Keep, or the, the Dallas International Film Festival keeps dragging me back and other people as well is that it's created by filmmakers mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's programmed all of the people <laughs> who work in it have a film so we understand Amazing. that every film what's the, the phrase films aren't released they escape right. so um, every film is an achievement from uh, documentaries to shorts to all the rest of it and again a very entertaining film Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out to support the film. And guys, thank you so much for thank making you. such an entertaining thank flick. You thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you. you can find out more information about Tomato Republic and all of the documentaries at the festival at DallasFilm.org. Is there a website where people can find out more about Tomato Republic? 
There is, I think the link is on dallasfilm.org. It's a P as in Paul and R Productions backslash Tomato Republic. Fantastic. Check it out. And if you have not had a chance to come out to the festival, come out and see some amazing documentaries. Guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you very much.